Notes on Genesis, Chapter 3, Part 1 Though the moon cannot shine on its own. Genesis chapter 1, verse 16 to 19. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Moon reflecting the sunlight. God made the sun, moon, and the stars on the fourth day. The sun and the moon gives us light and hope to warm our hearts. When we carefully read and think about God's creation of heaven and earth, we see that there is a great providence and the secret of God is hidden in creation. As you know, if you read the Bible, all scriptures have their mates. Thus, to understand the Bible, one must not study by focusing on one aspect, but must read the whole Bible to find the matches here and there. In Psalms it says, which, the son, is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. In Genesis it talks about how Joseph speaks of his dream, saying, The sun, moon, and eleven stars bow down to me. Then his father Jacob says, Will your father and mother bow down to you? If the eleven stars represent Joseph's brothers, the sun and the moon represent the father and mother. Therefore, the sun ultimately represents the groom, and the moon represents the bride. If we think about this again, the sun represents Jesus, who is the groom, and the moon represents the church, which is the bride. It may sound like a forced interpretation, but if we read the Bible closely, we can see that God has expressed Jesus and the church in such various ways. In some places, Jesus is referred to as a good shepherd, and in some places he is expressed as the Lamb of God. It may be confusing because in some places he is a shepherd, and in some places he is a sheep. Jesus is also the vine, the bread of life, and he is also the groom to the church, which is the bride. Let's think about the sun and the moon a bit more closely. The sun radiates light on its own, but the moon cannot radiate lights on its own. The moon can never emit any light without facing the sun. The moon is bright. The moon is really round, actually means. The moon is now reflecting the sunlight. The moon is now facing the sun. The moon can never radiate light on its own regardless of how badly it wants to. But it automatically emits light when it is facing the sun. We say full moon, half moon, crescent moon. But in reality, the moon itself does not change from a full moon to a half moon or to a thin crescent moon. The moon itself is round, whether it is a full moon or a half moon. This is also true when it is a thin crescent moon, the shape of your fingernail clippings. The moon itself is round, and when all of it receives the light from the sun, it appears as a full moon. When it is only receiving half and reflecting it, it is a half moon. When almost all of it is covered and only the edge is receiving light and reflecting it, it is then a thin crescent moon. A moonless light does not mean that there is no moon, but it is invisible because it is not reflecting any sunlight. The light shines when we face Jesus. Everyone, this is about spiritual life. We have no light ourselves. It would be extremely painful if the moon would try to radiate light on its own not to mention that it is absolutely impossible. That is how our spiritual life is. I tried to follow the law of God and tried to live the life of light and salt before I was born again. The church taught me, ye shall be the light of the world, ye shall be the salt. And I labored to live as the light and as the salt. I tried to not sin and tried extremely hard to live according to the word of God. Although I tried, it would not work. It is not so easy to realize, I am not the light. One labors and it seems that it is working in the beginning. But because man has filthy, dirty and dark things within, ultimately, wicked, filthy, dirty actions appear through them. That is why it is meaningless to labor and become the light yourself. I must be bright, holy and righteous when I go before God. If I were filthy, dirty and evil, how could I stand before God? That is why I tried very hard to become bright. I tried to become righteous. I tried to become holy. The church goers around me did not know me and would say, Mr. Park is such a good person. 
Mr. Park is so faithful, and his faith is so good. There was not one person among the pastors and elders who gave me compliments who really knew me. However, the Bible says that I am filthy and dirty. You are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. If the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, how would man smell? He would smell rotten, disgusting, and nasty. He would not smell good. But amazingly, if the moon that cannot emit any light shines brightly over a garden, how amazed people become. Right then, people say, hey, the moon is bright. They do not say, the sun is bright. The light the moon is projecting, is it actually moonlight or sunlight? It is sunlight. The moon only receives the sunlight and reflects it like a mirror. But people say the moon is bright. One day I realized this fact deeply in my heart. The providence of God who made the sun and the moon teaches us this fact. We can live a life of light by reflecting the light radiating from God, not because of our own effort and labor not to sin, but to keep the law and to live as a good person. But when we look to Jesus, the holy light of Jesus shines upon our hearts. The light that shined on me shines on others. It cannot be done through the law. Most people are deceived by Satan and cannot think properly. They think that if they zealously keep the law and do well according to the word, they would be able to go to heaven. But this is not so with people who know how to think further. They are free from such one-dimensional thinking and think deeper. If fish knew how to think a little when a fisherman fishes, they would never bite the fish hook. Hey, these worms don't live in the sea, so what is this guy doing here? And there's a string connected to the end of the worm. The string is going up. There's a person at the end of the string holding a stick. Ah, it's a fishing pole. Ah, people are trying to capture us fish. The fish would realize this. If the fish had that much wisdom, fishing itself would be no more because fishermen would not be able to catch any fish. However, the fish do not have that wisdom. They only think to simply bite food. They instinctively bite the food and do not have the rationale to think deeply. In June chapter 1 verse 10, the Bible says, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. There are many people who think with their natural instincts. They do not have the capacity to think deeply. So they simply think, God told us to keep the law. So I'll be fine if I keep the law. But people who have thought deeper than this say, Ah, it is impossible for me to keep the law. My heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. How could anything good come from it? Only evil, filthy, lustful and deceitful things come from me. That is right. How can we change such hearts as ours into something good? It is impossible. We realize this when we gain wisdom. Some people who calculate the chronicles of the Bible say that the law came down in 1491 BC. The law was received by Moses from God on Mount Sinai approximately 1500 years ago before Jesus came. Many people tried to keep the law until Jesus came, but there was not one person who kept the law perfectly. Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 3 tells us, people who have broken even one law are the same as those who have broken them all. Thus, no one can become righteous before God through keeping the law perfectly. If the wisdom of God comes to me, I can think, Ah, I cannot keep the law. I cannot become righteous through the law. And realize this is true. However, if I fall into my own foolish thoughts without the wisdom of God, I end up simply thinking, I'll be fine if I keep the law well. God made the sun and the moon to teach us that we cannot become righteous and holy through zealously laboring to keep the law. Jesus himself is light, and because there is no darkness in him whatsoever, the sun represents Jesus. Then we are the moon. The moon does not labor or try to radiate light on its own, but it automatically emits light even without knowing it, as long as it is facing the sun. It means that all we need to do is receive the light of Jesus. End of chapter 3, part 1